Let's talk to Craig Earlham. He is a senior market analyst. Oh, and a uh, very good morning to you, young Craig. Good morning. Right, one thought-provoking slide. Um, the euro and US dollar daily chart looks very complex. Um, what's going on? Yeah, these things always do. Um, I mean, I just, I just think it's quite interesting right now. I think we're starting to reach a, a couple of very interesting levels. The reason being we've seen this little dollar resurgence now over the past uh, couple of months. We've got to remember that people are thinking the dollar is, is, is going to go just go up and up and up yep. uh, because the Federal Reserve is tightening so much quicker than the other central banks. But we have to remember that this move has actually come on the back of a terrible 2017 for the greenback. Uh, we saw big losses against the pound, big losses against the euro, etc. Um, so this is actually more of a corrective move than it is a longer term uh, positive bullish move. Um, and we're now into hitting some interesting levels because you start to question how much of this dollar move is now priced in. And when you're looking at the charts now, you can see that these divergences are forming now. A divergence is when price action is saying one thing, which in this case is we're making lower lows, and the momentum indicators, which are the MACD and the stochastic on the bottom, are saying something else. They're making higher lows. So you're starting to wonder how much lower is this going to go before we start to maybe find a bit of a flaw. Okay. And we're hitting these interesting levels. 15, 61.8 fib are ones that I'm always keeping a close eye on. We're heading into that territory now. You come to around those kind of 113s, 114s, and we're hitting prior levels of support and resistance. So that immediately becomes an interesting level as well. So I think what we're going to see potentially materialise now, I know that we had the ECB on Thursday, and that's where we saw that big drop off from 118 back to 116. And I know it was very dovish sounding, but this is something that Mario Draghi's a pro at. He's a pro <laughs> at saying something that's hawkish yep. and then wrapping it in dovish language. Yep. Um, very good. And that is why we saw this move. I'm not sure it doesn't necessarily give it the legs to go back below the kind of 113, 112 levels, um, but it's nice in the near term and it protects him and it manages the currency, which is what he wants to do. He doesn't want the currency to be too strong, but I'm not sure how much longer it can go on because four rate hikes are almost priced in for the Fed now. Um, rate, interest rate increases up to around 3%. It's pretty much already in, uh, priced in for the Fed now. So you wonder how much more left is going to drive this dollar higher. And at some point, the ECB is going to start tightening monetary policy further. And then that will need to be uh, effectively priced in as well. And it is starting now from a very low base. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is now that we've had this corrective move in the dollar, I'm looking at these kind of 112 to 114 region. And I think these are some very interesting levels. If we break below here, then perhaps there is more to go. But I think this could be potential support levels. Short term. Say. OK, so at the moment, in terms of the currency, Pep, you know, the textbooks say sometimes, you know, fundamentals are driving the market, sometimes the technical, sometimes political situation. What's really driving this currency pair at the moment? Well, I think there's a couple of things. One, like you say, I think uh, fundamentals are always important to keep an eye on. The central banks are very active right now. And we now. know Europe's slowing, right? So the and fundamentals Europe is would suggest a, a sell of the euro. Yeah, I mean, the Europe's slowing, but it's not... I don't think this is a long-term thing. I do think this is more of a blip in the near term. And there is a, has been a lot of political risk. We're now seeing it with Angela Merkel as well. Uh, her position is coming under threat, and the next two weeks are going to be extremely important. And yep. if she is dethroned, then, um, th then that could cause some turmoil for the euro, because she has been the stabilising force uh, for the eurozone for so long. So there are some political uh, uncertainties uh, in Europe, um, the central banks are, are obviously key. And even recently, the dollar is getting some support as well from its safe haven uh, aspect. We saw the 10-year yield, for example, on US Treasuries dip below 2.9% yesterday in relation to this kind of trade war, which is funny considering it's actually the US which is initiating it. Um, the yen is typically your biggest safe haven, but the dollar is clearly seeing some safe haven flows at this moment, so that's probably helping to lift the dollar. But even then, we're not even below the previous lows at this stage, so you're starting to wonder again, how much are we, can we rely on that safe haven flow? How much can we rely uh, on the euro weakness? How much of the euro weakness is now already priced in? Um, I think the biggest driver is always going to be the central bank and interest rates ultimately. And if the ECB is keen on ending its QE, which it clearly is at the end of this year, if it is eyeing an interest rate rise from the middle of next year onwards, which it clearly is, then that I think is going to be the biggest driver. Okay. Last point on the technicals, obviously you've got a higher low in place. Now the textbooks would say the old Dale theory that basically you should potentially buy okay, mm -hmm. on that higher low running a stop on the, the previous low. I think that is that is the case as long as we now do see some upward momentum and even better take out that previous high just around the 118s. Yeah, that would then that would give, give as you said, the Dow theory would suggest that therefore you're probably, you, 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 uh, you're potentially going to see some uh, upward moves from there. What I would say is 
We've got a high low currently, but it's not like this move has ended. We've had this big sell-off on Thursday. We've had some consolidation just above the previous low, but usually when you see a big sell-off followed by consolidation, that's still a bearish move in the near term. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do dip below that previous low. And again, like I say, then the momentum indicators become interesting again, and then you start to look at that kind of 114, 112 region as being a potential supportive zone. On that note, Craig, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.